Tech yes, yeah, citizens, on the table here we have a Z-Case P50 from a company called SFF Tech. And I've never tried this case before, nor have I heard of the manufacturer. However, they sent this over with an included power supply. This power supply right here is a Flex ATX. And it's even smaller than Small Form Factor ATX, which I've done a mini ITX build in earlier this year with a 9900K build. If you haven't seen that build, I'll put the link up here where I had a lot of difficulties doing mini ITX in the TU100. But here today, this looks a little bit simpler. It definitely looks like a more open design. However, the costs of this case and the power supply tally up to 309 US dollars. So it's very expensive where the case is 199 by itself, comes in red, black, or silver, and this power supply is $109. Though it is a 600 watt unit, with 50 amps available on the 12 volt line, which should be enough for powering today's build, which is a 3950X, 32 gigabytes of RAM, two terabyte SSD, 2080 Super, and we're gonna be using the Noxua L12S low profile cooler. So this is coming in at 70 mil tall, and I am a little bit worried if it will fit in this case, since officially this is rated for 60 mil tall max with the included spaces. Now you can use a half spacer or no spacer at all, which will lower the glass level. And if you're using the full spacers like we've done here today, then you can fit up to a triple slot GPU up to 285 mil long. You've also got support for two 2.5 inch SSDs near the top, just over where the power supply is to go, which uses an extended ATX cable to plug it up from the rear. Now the whole chassis here is aluminum and they've used anodized aluminum for the coloring. And this also features the power button and the USB ports at the bottom of the case, as well as including a colored base plate and a PCIe 16X riser cable so you can extend your graphics card to mount vertically. But ultimately the only way to judge a case is to do a full build in it and then run some tests. And that's exactly what we're gonna do from here in. So let the B-roll begin. Now this is the part of Tech Yes City where I stick to my grassroots. I come from a place uh, called Queensland in Australia and here we uh, stick to the motto if something doesn't fit, you make it fit. So we've now got this whole build up and running and we're installing windows and everything seems okay so far. We'll be running those tests soon, but what we've got here is a 3950X with a 2080 Super in this small form factor case. Though not as all perfect so far with this build. I'm gonna point out some big uh, issues that I had building in this. First of all, the blue USB cable. Now on the website, they're showing a black cable and I don't know what it is, but that blue cable is just sticking out like a sore thumb in this build. The second thing is I had to wire my own power switch, uh, which was really like, you shouldn't have to do that whatsoever. And that was like really tedious because I just realized that after I finished the whole build, I was like, oh wow, there's actually no power switch there. Uh, the second thing is, the biggest thing is this graphics card, kind of where it wants to sit is it's coming out at an angle so some of my connection points aren't actually fully accessible, whereas opposed to the base of the riser cable and where it screws into, it's coming into the case. So that is probably the biggest issue for me uh, on this case itself. But other than that, it was a pretty straightforward build for a mini ITX system. I did have to unscrew a lot of screws initially where you gotta take off this metal frame, then you gotta take off the back, 
and then you gotta take out this bracket to mount your power supply, which we, you will want to put the power cable in before you remount it back in. And even then, with this bracket over the power supply, I would have liked to have seen them outvert the bracket rather than have it inverted. So it was really difficult to uh, route cables behind it because it's inverted. And as you can see there, my USB cable doesn't want to route behind it just due to the location where it is as opposed to the motherboard. Though, what we've got here is now a case that is ready to get some testing done. However, I do wanna finish it off where I've still gotta mount the base plate on, but I'd also wanna mount the tempered glass over the front where I am going to have to go out and buy some additional spaces to bring it out to about 70 mil rather than its default 40 mil where it uh, sits at or 50 mil if you got one spacer, 60 mil if you got two spacers. So this case only came included with one set of spacers to bring it out to 50 mil. But anyway, let's finish this off and then run some tests. And now we're finished the temperature tests on this case right here with both glass on and glass off though. I'm gonna quickly interlude and say that the most impressive thing out of video today is the 3950X was being handled by the NHL 12S. That really like shocked me because we're getting four gigahertz all cores on 16 cores and we're getting up to 66 degrees and 102 degrees on the node temperatures. And moving over to the tempered glass on, this actually failed the test. Uh, of course, we didn't have enough room there for air to breathe properly, but moving over to the GPU sort of shows that this is a problem with this case where we had ample spacing between the GPU to get airflow in there, but we still got 10 degrees higher with that tempered glass side panel on versus off where it scored 67 degrees in MSI Combustor after 15 minutes of benchmarking with 100% fan speeds. With the uh, fans on auto, it does tend to go up around that thermal uh, throttling limit whilst keeping the noise down, but keeping it apples to apples show that the tempered glass will give you worse performance in terms of temperatures. And another thing going back to the glass with this case is how dark the tint is. I personally don't like it and I don't see the point of having a glass tinted this dark when you've got a vertically mounted GPU and you wanna flash off everything inside the case. And so this is going to go now to the uh, conclusion time with the Z case and the $199 US price tag, where on their website, they say they've only got a 30 day warranty. And I kind of came into a few issues where the included red anodized screws uh, pretty much just gave out and they started, um, the bits inside just started giving out when I was trying to screw it into tough spots. And then we've got that GPU mount at the bottom being off centered where it's kind of going in janky and it's even blocking out some of the uh, display ports. And then moving over to the inside, we've got that blue USB 3 cable, which is probably the most triggering thing on this case for me personally. Like I look at it and I just wish it was black in this case because it would just match everything else and it would look really clean without that tempered glass uh, side panel on. Though do keep in mind though, what I've done here today is not ordinary. I don't really know many people putting a 3950X and a 2080 Super in something this small. But that being said, when I do mini ITX, I do it, I like to go all out because I do travel with it and that's one of the aspects I like of mini ITX is the ability to be able to port it around and still get really good performance. So currently the Li An Li TU100, which I've modded, it's got the handle on it, that's still going to be my main daily driver for portability. It's just built really well, it's sturdy, it's strong, and of course, the temperatures aren't bad where I've able to mount a 120 mil water cooler inside that thing as opposed to this, which you're only really gonna be fitting in air coolers and you've gotta keep them low profile. But coming back to the Z case, ultimately I'm not gonna be recommending this case unfortunately, and the reasons being is those issues I mentioned before. The USB cable, it had no power switch, the uh, GPU mounted in really weird, and then of course some of the design issues inside like the invert going in where it should be coming out to uh, route the cables, I found that an annoyance as well. And so all this at a 199 USD price tag, I personally would like this thing to be flawless, but it 
is far from flawless in my opinion though. That being said, if you've fallen in love with the look of this thing, you think it's for you, I'll put the dimensions up of this case again, and you think the all aluminum build looks good, it's got the options you want, and you wanna put a mid-range build inside this thing, then by all means go for it. But keep in mind, the tempered glass is going to be a detriment to heat as well as the design is gonna have a few quirks. And lastly, it's got a 30 day warranty, which I've never heard of a warranty so small on a new product. And I even offer, for instance, a three month guarantee on my used builds that I sell here locally. So basically there it all is with the Z case from SFF Tech. If you guys enjoyed today's review, then be sure to hit that like button for us. If you have any questions or comments, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below, but also let us know in the comments, what do you think of this build? Is it something that's tickling your fancy? Do you think the price tag is just way out there? for a mini ITX solution. Love reading your thoughts and opinions. With all that out of the way, if you guys are still watching and you're not subbed and you're enjoying the content, then you may wish to ring that bell and hit that sub button. Wait, that's in the wrong order. You gotta hit the sub button, ring the bell, and then you get the videos as soon as they drop here at Tech Yes City. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.